everyone, and good afternoon. Today we're coming at you from the Bahamas on board the MSC Miravilia cruise ship. I go by the legend, and I've got my wonderful girlfriend, Molly. In this video here, we're gonna show you all around the Miravilia. All the food, the restaurants, the bars, the activities on this beautiful, beautiful Italian cruise ship. It's our second time being on the ship. Yeah, and we're starting out here in the pool deck, which is a, a very pretty pool deck. Yeah, I love the fountains. And the statues, and the, the, the beds by the pool. Mm -hmm. Get early, there early for those. But even like, there's a lot of them open right now. We are also in port though. That's true, that's true. But a beautiful, beautiful day. They use their pool area a lot and all sorts of different stuff. Yeah. They'll do bingo out here. They'll do trivias out here. Dance classes. Yep. We saw Master Chef at Sea, like a whole like cooking show competition out here. Mini golf competition. Yeah, there was karaoke one night. Belly flop. Belly flop contest. Somebody got engaged at the belly flop contest. It was great. Yeah. Um, there is a pool bar over there. It says to be pretty much always busy. But I do like the pool area. One thing with MSC, they don't let you bring your drinks into the pool. That hurts me. I don't, I like, I don't like that rule. I can understand. I see why they would do it, but uh, there we go. And that is the pool deck area. Let's go explore the rest of the ship. In the pool area, there's also some food options. Over there, you can get ice cream, and there's a bar on the far side past the ice cream. And then over here, yeah. there's kind of a small buffet. So you get different things. Look at that. Cookies. Yeah. Look at that. MSC has really good cookies. And french fries. And french fries. And cheeseburgers. They're just kind of okay. But the pizza. Mr. Yummy Yummy right there. Mr. Yummy Yummy makes the pizza. It's so good. Thank you. Also worth mentioning that on the deck above the pool area, there are a couple of hot tubs. They're small hot tubs. Yeah. And there's no hot tubs at the pool level. No, but they kind of hang over the side of the ship. So, I mean, especially on a sea day, these hot tubs would give you a wonderful view. On the top of the ship, all the way up here, I think we're on deck 19 now, is the water park. I like the water park. They've got three different water slides, two tube slides and one a space bowl body slide. Very gentle slides. Yeah, definitely. Um, which, and you're not the biggest fan of water slides. No, so. but I like the two tube slides. Yeah, and they got a lot of like little splash things in the tipping bucket. I love the theme. Like yeah, the it's an theme. Arctic theme. Uh, there's like a nice, uh, just like kind of a small pool for kids. And there's also a ropes course over here. That, uh, that's I can't say. No, you you had a mild panic attack. I have done numerous of these, and I don't know what came over me. It was this element right but, there. Yeah, and there's no easy aside on yeah. a couple of them. And some of the ones are pretty was, loose. So. I was midway through, and I I just stopped. But I, I like if you have kids, you'll probably spend a lot of time in this section of the ship. It was fun though, and it was great views after oh, yeah. I got over my panic attack. Quick note: when it comes to the aqua park and the ropes course, you do need to sign a waiver to go on either one, and that gets you a wristband, which they check before they let you on the slides. Yes, kids do need parents and guardians to sign. On the top deck in the back of the ship, you'll find the Horizon Pool area. Now, this is an adults-only area section of the ship, which is nice because there are a lot of kids here, and kids tend to be rambunctious in pools. Yes. Um, there's a bar up here. Something I find interesting about this section of the ship, the, uh, the Mirror Village doesn't have like a dedicated nightclub, so every night, this becomes a dance floor and a DJ party. Also want to make a note, in the Horizon Pool area, there is a, a hot tub as well. Good job. Really pretty feet. Yeah, it's, I'm happy there's nobody over here because yeah. uh, you can see the hot tub is like right on the edge of the ship. We're at the, the private island destination today. On the Lido deck, in the middle of the ship, you'll find what's known as the Bamboo Pool. There's going to be some ping pong and foosball over here. And this is kind of a, it's a retractable roof over here. Yes. So uh, much like a, a baseball stadium would have. So that way, if there is an inclement weather day on your cruise, they could close the roof and everyone can continue to enjoy. Now this is all ages, unlike yep. a lot of stellariums where it's only uh, does, adults. Does have a cool like waterfall kind of effect on mm -hmm. the background. And uh, if you like hot tubs, this is probably the place to go. There are two on the lower level by the pool and then two here on the upper level. And if you notice, the upper level, someone's drinking in the pool because there's no lifeguards here to stop. Yeah, so uh, I'd say I, that's what I would do. There is a cool turtle statue here in the bamboo pool area and also a good sized bar. On deck 16, towards the rear of the ship, we'll get to the Sportsplex area. In the Sportsplex area, you do have the virtual games arcade. Now these games are not included with the cost of your cruise, they all cost money, like if you want to play Aliens Armageddon, that'll run about $2. Uh, not an overly large arcade. No, it's very, very small. 
And there are also a couple of prize games outside of the arcade. And I like this one because you could win a swim ring to use in the water. Or Harry Potter stuff. Or Harry Potter stuff. For me. On deck 16, they have what they call the amusement park section of the ship. They've got a couple of the battle pod style video games. There is a full bowling alley in here. And the, the bowling alley is neat. You don't get that on a ship. But it's a, it's a pretty good sized bowling alley. No, definitely. And then they've got some simulator rides. The F1 simulator rides are very fancy. Look at that. Um, if you're a returning cruiser, uh, you get a, I think it's like 50% off the F1, so it's actually a really good deal. They've got a max flight simulator, a uh, 40 simulator from our friends over at Cryotech. But I, I think the highlight is the F1, because that, that, that looks so neat. And here are the pricing for the amusement park area. It is $12 for the F1 simulator, 11 for the XD cinema, 30 minutes to bowl for a half an hour, uh, 15 minutes for the flight simulator, and 10 minutes for the roller coaster. So not really, not absurd. There's also packages you can get that'll help you with cars. On deck five, six, and seven in the center of the ship, you'll find the atrium area. A very sleek, very, very pretty atrium. <laughs> They've had a saxophone player, piano player here. Yeah, it's a lot of a, like instrumental music, like mm -hmm. you can have a conversation and enjoy music. Um, this also kind of be, we're gonna have some of your nuts and bolts of the cruise ship. You will have uh, your short excursion desk, as well as your guest services area. And of course, there wouldn't be an atrium without a bar. But that seat is horrible. Oh yes, <laughs> that's true. Uh, there are, in the atrium area, there's bars on five, six, and seven. And uh, this one's probably my least favorite, only because these weird question mark kind of seats. They look cool. They do. But they're not comfy. Yeah. Holly, you love these stairs on board the ship. Yes, I think that this is what MSC is known for most. These diamond stairs. Yeah, I think they're like sportsy crystals. Mm-hmm. On deck six, you'll find the Galleria Miravilia, which is kind of the, the heart and soul of the cruise ship. Mm -hmm. Starting off over here, you've got the photo gallery and the edge cocktail bar on one side. I do like the chairs at the edge bar. Very comfy chairs. You have a jewelry store. And on the other side, you do have the MSC logo store. We'll show you in there in a little bit. And here you have the Galleria, which is uh, awesome. The, the ceiling is a LED dome. They have dome shows. Yeah, so the- About two a night. Yep, and then it'll be in your times guide. Mm-hmm. And there'll be all sorts of stuff in here, a lot of shopping, a lot of dining, and a couple of bars. Do you have a- Fumes. Perfume store. Um, you kind of got a mini mall section over here to my right, where you'll have uh, duty-free shopping. So watches, more perfumes and colognes, cosmetics. Uh, my favorite one is the uh, duty-free liquor store. Something I found interesting, MSC has their own line of uh, liqueurs. Mm -hmm. So they had like a melon cello that was really good. There was a free liquor tasting one night. I also, probably my favorite piece of art on board the ship. I, I think that, that that's really neat. Over there is Ocean Key, which is their upcharge seafood restaurant. Uh, me and Molly not big seafood people, so we did not eat there. Mm -mm. You do have crepes and gelato, which look amazing. They are upcharge. Yeah, that's that's where this comes in. Kind of a kick in the pants. But uh, and walk amazing. I know, look at the one with all the little brownies on it. Oh, and the gelato. Yeah, the gelato looks really, really good. Get a quick shot here of this delicious looking gelato. So yeah, and uh, not not crazy overpriced too. No, like you get no. a small gelato for I think three dollars and sixty cents. And you have your excursions again. Interesting, they have two different excursion desks. It makes sense because uh, on embarkation day, both were open. Both mm -hmm. had long lines. Yep. Over here on the left is Ola Tacos and Cantina. So that is going to be an upcharge Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, this one much cheaper. You get a couple of bucks for tacos, a couple of bucks for like guacamole made at your table. Like it's not the big investment like going to the teppanyaki, the ocean key, or the steakhouse. On the right over here is the chocolate store. And the chocolate store is cool. Yes. Uh, Jean Philippe, who also has uh, locations in Las Vegas, has one here on board the ship. So many different sculptures. Yeah, models. lots of fancy like chocolates and macaroons that you could buy. You could build your own chocolate bar with whatever kind of like toppings you want on there. Of course, plenty of chocolates to buy. My favorite part about this is they have 
chocolate sculptures. Mm -hmm. And some of them are just amazing. I also like the chocolate chips. Yes. Like those are awesome. Very much so. I know for a while with their uh, their loyalty program, you would get a chocolate chip if you were a top tier guest. I don't know, mm -hmm. I think they changed it to a different chocolate gift. But I mean, that's a giant chocolate hermit crab. And these are just kind of like works of art that you, you can't buy, you just come and take a look at. You could also have, they've got a show kitchen, so if they're doing the chocolate stuff, you could come in here and watch them. A big chocolate violin. We don't know what this is supposed to, I think it's supposed to be like Pennywise, but it's, it's kind of terrifying. We are uh, sailing during Halloween. Now that is terrifying. This is very terrifying. <laughs> But, but some of it, it's just really cool. It's like the little iguanas. I love the plant. The yes. Plant. You've got Maui, the rocks character from uh, Moana. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Frankenstein, a whale. Uh, the dragon is very impressive. Which brings us to the Miravillian Lounge. Now this is used in the evening for uh, bands. There's a couple different bands in here. There'll be some game shows in here as well. I think that just about every night of the cruise, there's a name that tune in here. Mm -hmm. And then the final section of the Galleria is the jewelry and the boutique. So, you know, kind of a uh, fancy lady stuff. And of course there's deck parties. Oh yeah. This oh. is where your deck parties happen. Yep. Uh, there was like a 70s flower power party on the first night of our cruise. Tonight there's a silent disco. Mm -hmm. so of exciting. course we were at Halloween, so there was a Halloween party. Which was, which was wonderful. Which was great. And here we go, that's the Galleria. I think we're in my favorite spot to watch the dome shows right now. Up here on deck seven, towards the front of the ship. Also, you can see the beautiful, beautiful clock. On deck seven in the Galleria area is home to the TV studio and bar. It's a bar that'll operate in the evenings. And they've done different things in here. We've seen karaoke in here. Trivia. Trivia in here. Um, I think they might do some dance stuff in here as well. Mm -hmm, they did dance classes in here. And, and uh, those chairs. They're weird looking, but they are comfy. They're really comfortable. Yeah. Uh, one weird thing I would say about the Miravilia is uh, they have trivia, but then you don't win prizes. If you win, you just get like a round of applause. We won a uh, like Halloween movie trivia. And just won a, a round of applause. Yay. On deck seven is also where you'll find a lot of the upcharge restaurants here on the Miravilia. On this side, you're gonna find the teppanyaki as well as the sushi bar. Uh, the Tepanaki's fun where you get the big table and they cook right in front of you. On the other side is where you'll find Butcher's Cut, which is the steakhouse on board the ship. Uh, definitely a bit more of an expensive experience over in the steakhouse. A uh, really good menu though, they have some nice stuff in there. They also do a brunch during the day. Mm -hmm. uh, the, but the brunch costs money as well, but that's more reasonable. All right, we're now in deck seven in one of my favorite spots on board the ship. And that is the Brass Anchor Pub. I love how they have seating like outside on the promenade area. And it's a, it's such a charming, wonderful little pub. They will have some sports on. They get like some of the weird foreign ESPN. They got like one, uh, one NFL game in each time slot. They have been getting the World Series. And in the evenings, at, uh, there's been a guitarist in here. And it's interesting because it's not an acoustic guitarist. The gentleman plays an electric guitar and plays it very well. I like those boots over there. Those are very, very comfortable. This is where you'll find the best selection of beer on board the ship. Also, um, they got some fun drinks in here. Really, it's one of the few bars with a specialty drink menu. And two things I really like, they do beer cocktails, and they also do different takes on the Moscow Mule. Uh, I ordered, I just ordered a Cherry Orchard, which is going to be, oh, there's Molly with the menu. Feel free to pause, but they got a whole bunch of different draft beers. The Cherry Orchard is great. Yes, the Cherry, the only beer cocktails are over here. The Cherry Orchard is one of our go-tos. It's a black raspberry liqueur and Strongbow. Bottled beers. I love the friends of Canada Hefeweizen. And then they also have all their vodkas and whiskeys. And uh, the chips on the Moscow Mule. Cherry Orchard. Right now we're on Dick's 7 in the atrium area. And this is where you'll find the Champagne Bar. Um, bar that actually, this is our first cocktail on a 49 cruise, the first time we came here. Got a, a very long champagne and sparkling wine list. Last a lot of stuff in the bottle. A couple by the glass. There's the last time we came here, it was only one drink that you could get on the beverage package. Yeah, but we, now there's a couple. We have the uh, the top tier beverage package, the premium mm -hmm. one. And that'll cover everything up to $15. And I love that there's so many champagne and sparkling wine cocktails. I am drinking a Chambord Royal. Molly's got an Applejack. A very nice bar, very snazzy. And as a big, big theme park dork, the, uh, the bar stools remind me of Spaceship Earth at Epcot Center. 
Located on deck six, all the way here in the front of the ship, is the Broadway Theater. Now this is the big show theater on board the Miravilia. Uh, we're on a four night cruise. They are running three different big production shows. On the first night, it was, I don't remember the name of the show. It was uh, very much like 70s disco kind of stuff. On night two, it was a Broadway show. One day more. Which are very traditional like Broadway style sh show tunes. Not, not really contemporary ones. Mm -hmm. uh, last night there was no show because we were at the private island. And tonight is going to be Born to Rock, which I'm guessing will be your traditional rock and roll kind of show. A couple things to note about the theater here. You do need to make reservations for the shows. You can mm -hmm. do it on the app or any of the touch points around the ship. And unfortunately, something that I really don't like, you can't bring your drink into the show. Which I understand because it's difficult to clean up, but not the best guest friendly. No, especially if you have a nice buzz going. Yeah, no, a 45, 45 minute, minute show, show of no drinks. Yeah. Ooh. And here's one of those touch points. You'll find them all throughout the ship. Also, the show that I was thinking about on night one, that was something called Cool. And uh, here you can plan your theater shows, or you take a look at the daily programs, all that fun stuff. Also, you could do most of this on the app as well. There are four different main dining rooms here on the MSC Miravilia. Three of them are located on deck six in the back of the ship. One is on deck five in the back of the ship. Uh, we had a set dining time. We got to uh, suggest if we went early or late, we went for early. And so we'll be dining every day at 6 p.m. We're in the La Olive Dore dining room, which we're walking up. It's gonna be on the left-hand side. We requested a table for two and we got it. Well, well we when we called, we were not assigned a table for two. Correct. But when we went there, that's one thing I would recommend once you get on board the boat. If you do have a, uh, a recommendation of where you want to sit, come and check on your table. As we are going to be dining over in here in a, uh, an elegant but simple dining room. Yep. This will be our third meal of the ship on, in the main dining room. Uh, one I really liked, one I thought was just okay. We just sat down for dinner on night four, and here's what the menu looks like. It is nice they bring over a, just a paper menu. Thank you. It is uh, Italian night, so we've got calamari, antipasto, arancini, minestrone soup. I like that they make their pasta fresh on board. Chicken parm, pasta primavera, desserts, lemoncello cake, tiramisu, grandma's chocolate cake. They do have a, uh, a chef suggestion every day, which today is an, an asabuco. And then your classic favorites, these will be there every single night of the ship. First course is always a bread and butter course. I like that they give you these little breadsticks. The appetizer course is served. I got the classic Italian anti-post. I, lo I love prosciutto. That's probably the French mozzarella they make upstairs. Molly, one of the classic options. The French onion soup, I had it yesterday, it was very good. They uh, they include Jack Daniels in the broth, so that, that gets it up for me. I like that. I did something very rare for me. I ordered two appetizers. My second appetizer is an arancini, which is a uh, fried rice and cheese ball with some uh, tomato sauce. The main course has arrived. Molly got chicken parmesan. And uh, once I saw they had fresh pasta made on board, I had to go with the penne. There is pancetta in there as well, something I really enjoyed. Finishing up Italian night with some very Italian desserts. I got a limoncello cake. And Molly the tiramisu. On deck 16, in the middle of the ship, you'll find the gym on board. Not the biggest gym you'll ever see on a cruise ship. Kind of weird that it's in the middle of the ship. These are almost always in the front of cruise ships. Right now we're on deck 18, towards the middle of the ship, and that's where you'll find the Sky Lounge. Um, one of my favorite lounges on the ship. Yes. The bar will only run in the evenings. And it does not have a special menu like it used to. Yeah. It's now the stock menu. Yes. Um, last night in here there was like a jazz trio playing. Mm -hmm. Our favorite chairs, some of the best chairs on the ship are those white ones right there. They're very, very comfy. And it's a uh, big, big lounge too. It's gorgeous for sailways or sailing into port. We watched football one day yep. on the big screen from here. On deck 18, towards the back of the ship, you'll find the kids club area on mm -hmm. board. And if you couldn't tell, they have the, uh, the license for the Lego characters. Got all sorts of different games and stuff for the kids. A computer area. Got a foosball, foosball table. 
um, there is a big sports court that spans two different decks. You see people playing basketball in there, we've seen people playing soccer. And the kids club area where the kids will get checked in and out is going to be over there. It's also a baby club. I love the mascot. Yeah. It's so cute. On deck seven in the rear of the ship, you'll find Casino Imperial. Well, the MC Mirabilia is a gigantic ship. It is. The casino, I would say, is not very large. No. You've got all of your table games here on the right side. Do you have some video poker games as well? A, uh, a very good sized bar. I do always love the coin pushing game. All of your slot machines will be over there. Your TV and bar. Yep, which will play, uh, you know, their two ESPNs they get. A very pretty casino. It is. But not the biggest. I guess I feel like the side with the slot machines feels bigger. Located on deck seven in the back of the ship, you'll find the Carousel Lounge. Now this is a very, very unique venue for a cruise ship. It is a theater in the route. It was originally designed for Cirque du Soleil at sea. Unfortunately, during the pandemic, they lost that license, but they still use the Carousel Lounge. Now these are gonna be upcharge shows. On our sailing, there was two different shows in here. Each one, if you bought them before the cruise, was $12. If you bought them on board, it was 18. And the tickets for the show do include a alcoholic beverage, which is pretty nice. Now the show, it is very Cirque du Soleil inspired. One is called Rock Circus, which is kind of like 80s hair metal set to all sorts of different acrobats. The second show is House of Houdini, which is a little bit more of a Cirque du Soleil vibe, a little bit more weird, a little bit more funky. I actually like that one better, but both I quite enjoyed. On deck 15, in the back of the ship, you'll find the Marketplace Buffet, which is the very, very large buffet here on board the Miravilia. And let's start the buffet tour with the uh, Molly's favorite part of the buffet here on board the Miravilia. They have a mozzarella station, so sometimes you'll see the chefs in there making fresh little mozzarella balls. And you can see them floating in the, the water there. It's so delicious. I get them a whole bowl. Yep, and then obviously they'll use the cheese for the pizza as well. Mm -hmm. Also in the very nice, when you first walk in, there is a bar. Something I love about the Miravilia, their pizza is really, really good. I think it's one of the best pizzas at sea. Oh, it's, yeah, it's very good, like tasty, like New York style pizza. Oh, they got the, the mozzarella and bacon pizza again today. I had that twice yesterday and quite enjoyed it. Ooh, look at those. Yeah, and calzone. Yeah, solid. And then right by the pizza, there is a selection of cheeses. And this is my friend's mozzarella right there. Yep. And lots of little meats and cheeses. I do think this is really cute. In the area of the buffet closest to the pool is a kid section. Uh, that cheese bread is delicious. Let's see what's on the kid's buffet. Uh, the best desserts, meats, fruits. Stuff you would think like hamburgers, hot dogs, quesadillas, uh, chicken nuggets, delicious. There's a section for wellness, which is a lot of fruits and desserts. A lot of desserts. In the grill area, there is uh, grilled onions, a clam pot pie, a good looking grilled chicken and then some vegetables and then there's cheeseburgers over here as well grab the cheeseburgers there's also hot dogs and french fries the french fries on board the ship are delicious they are. of course there has to be a salad station kind of an interesting option mm -hmm. A soup and pasta area. There's steamed rice, cannellini bean soup, uh, pasta with cream cheese, and then it looks like another pasta with cheese. Oh, calamari pasta. And then another salad station. A Caesar salad area. Yes, sir. Hi. Ooh, and a carving station with roast turkey. Yeah. Look at that. We got some mashed potatoes, cauliflower, quinoa, a beef stew. And there's an area called the ethnic section of the buffet, which is home to a, looks like a uh, kind of a wok type dish. And then you've got uh, sauteed seafood, uh, chicken. Ooh, 
Tex-Mex pork ribs. There are a couple different beverage stations, and these are run, I believe, 24 hours a day. Uh, some have like coffees and teas, some don't. It's a very, very large buffet area, but like all buffets, it does get pretty crowded. Um, we found if you go towards the farthest back part of the ship is where you get the, the quietest sections of the buffet. Also, this will be an omelet station in the morning for breakfast, and the lines on this one tend not to be too bad. It's also like going out here because you could sit outside at the very back of the ship and enjoy the afterviews. I have a hidden gem here on the mirror really. There's one elevator labeled like the panoramic elevator. It's off on its own right in the middle of the ship and it is a glass elevator that looks out towards the ocean and the water. That kind of hangs over the ocean a little bit. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, we're going on from deck 15 all the way down to deck 5. It's like we're getting a clean ride here on the panoramic elevator, which yep. is now no longer panoramic. <laughs> when you book an MSC cruise, you don't only book your cabin, you also book the type of experience that you want, and different levels come with different perks. For any guests that are booked in the Aria experience, which is I think the top level one, they do get their own sun deck area. On the top levels in the front of the ship, you get an area reserved for yacht club guests. Yes, it's on deck 15 and 16. Yep. And I think 18 too. There's a whole bunch of stuff over here. That's good. They're gonna have the yacht club folks will have their own restaurant, their own lounge, uh, their own sun deck, and I think there's probably I don't know if there's a pool or a hot tub. I think there's something up there. We are in an interior stateroom, so we definitely do not have yacht club access. One day. Probably not. Well, Molly, unfortunately, they no longer use the library. They don't. Nope. Fun looking chairs though. On deck seven in the front of the ship, you'll find the MSC Aria Spa. They have a big thermal suite in there, and of course, massages and treatments, and all that fun stuff. We're not really spa people. I do have gold status in the Voyager Club with MSC, so you do get one hour in the thermal for free. I didn't, I didn't do it, but I always thought like, oh, do you know what, if I woke up really hungover one day, that would be great. Quick look in the Lego store. I like that you can get an actual Lego cruise ship. That's really cool. The ship model. They don't have like cruise ship ornaments, but I think we're gonna buy that and try to turn it into a Christmas ornament. Uh, very nice backpacks, beach bags, um, lots of kids' toys as well. Winter wear, more cruise ship stuff. And last but certainly not least, I want to show you around the stateroom cabin. We were in 10314, an interior cabin, but a pretty good size interior cabin. It's pretty giant. Yeah, a uh, big bed. It's interesting, the bed itself was not the best, but the, the sheets and the pillows, very, very nice. Yeah, the bed itself was hard. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a kind of a vanity or desk area? Let's see, uh, blue there, I was blue for, I uh, was Steve for Halloween, so I had to take blue with me, of yeah. course. Um, I will say, if you're on the ship for longer than four nights, there is not a ton of storage. No. It's just that one, that there's a couple of drawers and stuff in one of them, but it, there's not a lot of storage no, for, no, no. for clothes for a seven night, and especially if you have a couple different wardrobe changes. Um, bathroom was very nice. Very sleek, very clean. Um, I love that it was a, a shower door instead of the curtain. Good pressure on the shower. Uh, plenty of room over here. A horrifying toilet noise. You do get a TV, there's probably about Say about 10 or so cable channels. Uh, no movie channels. There is a video on demand that you could buy for movies, but nothing that you would get uh, like included with the cruise. But they did have, like two weird foreign ESPNs, and uh, they did get a good amount of the NFL games. Right now the World Series is on, so if you're a sports fan, that that's good news. And Molly, that'll do it for our time here on the MSC Mirabilia Four Night Cruise. I think we both had a really, really we great did. time. We did. Uh, what were some of your favorite parts on this cruise? Oh, the staff was so friendly. They talked to you about anything, everything, every single one, happy to be here. They enjoyed their job. And they also, the staff came across as like human beings and people. Like, oh, we were talking to some staff members, and they were just like normal guys, like, yeah, next, next contract, after this contract's up, I want to go to Disney or Royal Caribbean because they pay better, and stuff like that. And some people might not like that illusion of like everything's perfect, and, but they came across as like genuine, real people. I feel like they let their hair down more than other cruise lines. Yeah, they talked with. about their own Halloween party that they had on the Yeah, 2,000 people, the whole crew got together for their yeah. Halloween party. Um, for me, I like the, uh, the, the good amount of attractions on this trip. I really like the water park and ropes course. I thought that area was really nice. Very well done. The parties. 
the parties in the atrium and the galleria, so good. Yeah, and every night of the cruise, there was a big party and something to get excited for, something to look forward to. Whether there was a silent disco, a beach party on their private island, a Halloween party because we're sailing during Halloween. Um, and speaking of that, the private island, MSC's Ocean Key, awesome island. Uh, the food. Yes. The pizza. One uh, of the, the main dining room was kind of hit or miss. I think we had two good meals and one just okay meal. Yes. Uh, the buffet I thought was pretty good quality. Yes. Some of the standouts on the buffet, the pizza, we ended every night of this four night cruise. I think with it's pizza. the best pizza. It may be Princess. Yeah, Princess but Alfredo's, I think, yeah. I think this one had a very good. And also, like, uh, sometimes on a carnival cruise ship, you'll have to get in like a 20 minute pizza line. There's no, there's no pizza line here. You just walk up, you get your big old slice, and you can get to bed. French fries, really good too. My French mozzarella. French mozzarella. Mm -hmm. Very big plus. I love the uh, the animations on the dome. There's shows and then all day long, like every time I walk through the gallery, I'm like, what's going to be on the dome right now? Because it does change quite a bit. It's a very sleek and modern ship, which With I like. lots of roaming waiters. Some cruise lines have kind of gotten away from the roaming waiters and you have to go to the bar. Here, there's a lot of roaming waiters on this ship. It might take a minute for your drink to get there, but you could get a drink without leaving your share. That's very nice. Uh, they also don't push their uh, upsell, you know, yeah. uh, especially restaurants or... Spa, casino, shopping. Photos. Like, that's really not pushed at all. And I think this cruise is a great value. On our four-night cruise, I believe we paid two eighty nine, which in retrospect is not a great rate. Like, you could have gotten this ship for probably 200 with the Wi-Fi and beverage package included. While we were on this ship, we actually booked a ship for the spring. We'll be back on MSC in April going on the seaside. And that one we booked for $200 a person, three night cruise with drinks and Wi-Fi. Yeah. Going back to the private island. Crazy. So just a really, really great value here on MSC Cruise Line. And that's the stuff we enjoyed, but with everything, we, we like to keep it real. There's some stuff we didn't like as much here on the MSC Miravilia. And uh, for me, that's they don't have a my time dining option or an eat when you want option. There are four dining rooms and they're all set time dining. And I, I really don't like that. It's kind of like, you know, I, I don't know when I'm gonna be hungry I don't know when I might want to nap, or there might be something good in that the entertainment gut lineup that I want to go see. And since we booked uh, Bella, the lowest class, the lowest tier, tier, um, you can't pick your time. You just say early or late. And so maybe you'll get it. Yeah. Who knows at what time you're dining until you actually get the card. And it's either six or eight thirty. Eight thirty is a really late time to have dinner. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a skimpy activity lineup. Uh, MSC is a very diverse cruise line. You get people from every walk of life every age, every nationality on this cruise ship. So doing things that are just in English, like a lot of other cruise lines do, like game shows and trivia, they wouldn't play as well on this ship. And they don't do as many activities. Like if you go on a Royal Caribbean or a Carnival cruise, chances are like every hour of the day, there's one or two things going on. Uh, this cruise line, there'll be hours at a time when there's nothing happening. Or a lot of dance classes, yeah. which is great if you like dancing. But yeah, dance is a universal language, like that, that, is, that also works. That is. Uh, I don't like no drinks in the pool or theater. Oh, no. I don't like either one of those things, man. Like, you're on a vacation, you want to relax. You paid for the beverage plan. Yep. Uh, speaking of the beverage plan, uh, and a little, little bit of stickler here. There's no craft beer or no si or hard seltzers. And, like, they haven't... I feel like the ship has gotten more Americanized since we've been on it three years ago. Yes, yeah, so they used to do nine different languages announcements and yeah. they do one or two. They usually do English and Spanish. Yeah, there, there is a, like a Lagunitas IPA in one, one, one bar and that's about it and no hard seltzers anywhere. And uh, the only other thing I say I don't like, we gotta be out of the stateroom by 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. It's the earliest we have. Yeah, that's like earlier than I think any other cruise line. But hey, we had a blast. This was such a fun four night cruise. I love that private island. I had so much fun with the various parties. It's a the gorgeous ship. Oh yeah. So a friendly. Absolutely. If you have any questions about the MSC Miravilla, let me know in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you guys didn't watch videos like this, Molly and I couldn't be on the ship right now. We wouldn't be on the seaside in April. So thank you so much for watching this video and thanks for watching.